only on CBS. Hi once again everyone, I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome as we continue down the road to the Final Four powered by Pontiac. Eight second round games ahead today beginning in a few minutes with Bradley against Pittsburgh. And at about 2.15 Eastern, four more games will tip including Bucknell taking on Memphis, Kentucky against UConn. We'll close the night around 4.45 Eastern with three more games that include Arizona against Villanova. I am joined once again by my partners Clark Kellogg, Seth Davis of Sports Illustrated. What will we see today? Well, I tell you what, we've got four double digit C's that are playing today. We've got North Carolina State, George Mason, Northwestern State, and Bradley all have opportunities to win. The most intriguing pair to me, though, are Bradley and when you think about George Mason. George Mason adds Tony Skin, who had to sit out because of a suspension. He's one of their best players. He's ready to go. And then when you think Bradley, they've got a big guy in Patrick O'Brien who may be able to handle that inside muscle of Pittsburgh. Those two teams, I think, may have a chance to spring upsets today. I don't know. I really like Pittsburgh and their physical strength inside. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're going to have to contend with Bradley's speed on the perimeter. But I also like the Georgetown Hoyas today to beat Ohio State. Ohio State's making 23% from three-point range in its last seven games. Georgetown has one of the few players in the tournament in Roy Hibbert who can deal with Terrence Styles inside. If that three-point percentage doesn't go up for Ohio State, the Buckeyes are going down. Did, did, you, hear, did you hear Clark's the heart slump, breaking? The <laughs> slump <laughs> ends today. Threes will be splashing in Dayton. Well, one thing's for sure, as it will be today, yesterday's key phrase was Sweet 16. Now with the shot clock down to five. Kuznar for three. Oh, what a shot! My heaven! Not a lot of time. It's intercepted. And Kuznar's got it. Inside the move. Wichita State is going to the Sweet 16. D. Brown, he's going to have to take the shot to tie. And he just missed off the brace of the rim. And Washington is in the Sweet 16. Harold Mitchell on his own from way downtown. They did not allow him to get it. It's Josh Carter. Loose ball. Tigers have it, and they're on their way to the Sweet 16. Of all the games we saw yesterday, I'm not sure we'll see another like that Washington-Illinois game. Wow. At first glance, Washington was in charge. You glanced again. The Illini were in charge and appeared to be so right up until near the end when Washington was in charge. They took advantage of their quickness, especially getting to the foul line, getting into the lane, drawing fouls, and the free throw game won that game for the Huskies along with great defense. It shows what great defense can do. The two teams that jumped out at me from yesterday were Florida and Gonzaga. Gonzaga played the best game that it's played since way back in Thanksgiving when it uh, was a run-up in the Maui Invitational, and I just think that Florida is really surging at the exact right time. They're not getting a big contribution right now, Clark, from their guards, Torian Green and Lee Humphrey, but it's always somebody different from them, and they are defending now. They look like they're well, really All of the roll. starters average double digits, and they've played together. They've played well defensively, and Joakim Kim Noah is unbelievable in terms of what he can do as a big guy, very similar to what we saw from Josh McRoberts, a 6'10 guy who can take it and rake it, get down the court with the ball and make plays. Those two guys are really difficult matchups for their opponents. One thing we know for sure about the NCAA a tournament it's important to have a guy with the basketball who can do that <laughs> we will continue along the road to the final four here on cbs after this word from your local station coming up an ncaa tournament triple header it all begins in auburn hills where the bradley braves will take on the pittsburgh panthers the winner advances to the sweet 16 we'll see you at the half enjoy the games everyone here on cbs CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Singular. That's great. Sonic. GMC. And by Miller. We 
welcome you to the Palace at Auburn Hills in Auburn Hills, Michigan, Oakland Brackets second round. The 13th seeded Braves of Bradley, 21 and 10 for the year against the fifth seeded Pittsburgh Panthers. Winner of this game goes on to Oakland and on Thursday will face either top seeded Memphis or ninth seeded Bucknell. Check the starting lineups on your left for the Bradley Braves. The seven footer Patrick O'Brien, Somerville, Twy, Bennett, and Daniel Ruffin. On your right, the seven foot Aaron Gray, LaVon, Kendall, Antonio Graves, Ronald Ramon, and Carl Krauser. This game brought to you in HDTV by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high definition television and mobile media. And Vern Lundquist, Bradley goes. Wait a minute. Kendall out uh, front, gets it in the hands of Antonio Graves. Now, Aaron Gray, who was superb in their first round game. There's a first turnover of the game. Stolen by Daniel Ruffin. They got to fake that post entry. Gray, a great looking target. He can handle it. Now back to J.J. Twy, a man whom we saw do so many things in their win over Kansas the other night. He's like Sanford, right? Yes. So all the junk, he can pick it up. Now here's Patrick O'Brien battling the seven foot Aaron Gray. That one rolls around the rim and drops through. Well, that would make you salivate having two outstanding seven foot and change guys. And uh, both of them have to stay on the floor. You would think Gray will be able to run up and down, maybe tire another turnover here, Vern. Tire O'Brien out. That's two. Here's Ruffin, kicks it in the corner. Tony, or Somerville, rather. And he's fouled. He'll go to the line. Marcella Somerville, the outstanding scoring leader of this team, had five threes in their win over Kansas the other night. And a chance to give Bradley a four-point lead. Jim Les, who played at Bradley, is the head coach in his fourth year. Played at Bradley, the last tournament win they had prior to two days ago was 1986 against UTEP. He was a starter on that team, and then he coached his team to a victory 20 years later the other night. And he's brought this team along since January. They've always been tough defensively. Uh, they're doing some terrific things on the offensive end, and some of the, one of the main reasons, Vern, 21 and 7 against KU the other night. There's the pass. Gray, he was perfect the other night. There's the jumper. That's his first miss in the NCAA tournament. He had six for six from the field the other night. How about that, huh? And Kendall running it down. He's another of those guys that can do a lot of things. Little nickel dimer. An elbow early. Jamie Dixon in his third season as the head coach at Pitt. He replaced Ben Howland when Howland went out to UCLA, and all Jamie has done, 31-5 and five his first year, 20-9 and nine last year, and, of course, they are 25-7 and seven this season. I'm very jealous of these guys. A, they're great coaches, and B, they're matinee idol looks, <laughs> uh, something that I never... Uh, you and possessed. I don't quite uh, equate to that, do we? No, no, we're more yeah. the John Wayne look. Yeah. <laughs> A uh, offensive foul by Krauser is an aggressive play. And who's there? Twy, as you may, uh, he is always in the mix. So in the early going, three turnovers now for Pitt. Bradley back in the NCAAs after a long absence. This is their first 20-plus win season since 1996. And a group of seniors on this team started out as freshmen with nine wins and 20 defeats they've come a long long way it's almost that you gotta believe too you got a good group hang tough somerville entry pass patrick o'brien there's the double from lebron kendall and they're gonna rake down nice hands by kendall again always in the mix isn't he plays his guy which is a tough assignment in somerville uh, but scraping down uh, just making yourself available come down in there and assist the big guy. The one nice thing I think about both centers, they can stay at home. Everybody can play their own man. Inbound pass, Tony Bennett. Bothered a little bit by a neck injury, so we'll keep our eye on that. He had a besides his play. Here's the jumper, not there. And it's saved by Krauser. A nice job by both Krauser and Gray, keeping O'Brien off the glass. They're going to Tough start. 
really tough start. Four turnovers, and we've yet to play three full minutes. And they only turned it over 13 times, and Krauser, the pugilist on the floor, he's fighting it out there. 4-0 Bradley lead, opening moments. Bradley knocked off Kansas in the first round the other night. Here's Somerville. Yeah, pretty good luck, though. Nice drop step, but Kendall is right there challenging. He's got some size on Somerville. Ramon wow. never had control. Hell ball, possession arrow goes toward Bradley. I think this, this is, is really a shaky start. I, I'm just saying, Jamie, it's a scary moment when you don't recognize your team. I mean, they're out of sorts and pressing a little bit. And Jim Les's guys are always in your shirt. They're always in position. They under, understand the balance and distance. Bradley Braves, of course, runners up in the conference tournament, the Missouri Valley Conference. They lost to Southern Illinois. Losers here the other night. The Missouri Valley in the NCAA tournament, as of this moment, has won three and lost two. Four teams in. And a nice body job. And certainly Gray has one to use. Bang them out, O'Brien. Crowder with a spin move. Twy guards him. LeVon Kendall, he's picked up by Somerville. You know, when they reverse the ball, they're a much better basketball team. A lot of touches, and the target inside is so welcome. Look how deep he is. Oh, boy, he really got position. But there's the defensive player of the MVC, Missouri Valley Conference, Patrick O'Brien. He gave the distance, huh? Good rejection. Physically, it's going to be tough on O'Brien, though. He looks fatigued early here. That's a major issue, I think, for Bradley. There he is over Gray for his second basket. But you're right, though. He looks a little winded. So much for fatigue, though. <laughs> it's amazing how you become energized once you touch that baby. 6-0 Bradley lead. Perfect start for them. There's the high pick from LeVon Kendall. Ramon, blue floater. No bounce. Out of bounds. That's check Patrick O'Brien defensively. Well, you see here how Gray just ducks in and that hand to hinder and making sure he doesn't reach down. Very sound fundamentally. Big upside on this big fella. Patrick O'Brien, his mom and dad were both basketball players at William Penn in Oskaloosa, Iowa. His dad, as a matter of fact, hit 60% from the field for the Statesman back in 1983. And this one does not look like a Statesman like me. Nice run here by Gray. That's something where Bryant does not get back, but a little bit late ends up with the rebound. Gray was perfect the other night, 6 for 6. He's 0 for 3 in the first uh, five minutes of this game. And that's what O'Brien does. He may not block him. Look at this now. Gray gives it up. It should be before the shot. Good call. Remember Bob Hoobricks? Oh, do I ever. Remember Lowell Cinder? Hooks, Hoobricks. Someday. A Husky. You may be watching this. 6 nothing. Bradley start near perfect as they envisioned it uh, when they went to bed last night. What's your impression early on? Well, I think Patrick O'Brien is such an influence. He's got two hurries. Uh, you know he's going to get some shot blocks, but offensively, his drop step and jump hook, it's just gorgeous. Uh, we mentioned the two greats from yesterday, Kareem being amongst them. You develop a hook at seven feet, not too many people are going to block it, Vern. Well, we mentioned the fact that his parents both played at William Penn. His mom, Kim Gaddison, is here. 15, 22 to go as uh, Patrick O'Brien gets a rest. Somerville had five threes yesterday. Marcellus Somerville misses that one. Now here's Krauser. Turnover problems have plagued Pitt in the early going. And the Kendall excellent defense again on Somerville with that size. Here's the switch. Pretty. There's Gray. And a foul is called. Uh, Andrews on the floor now. We mentioned O'Brien out. They should take advantage, and they do with the size and bulk. Patrick O'Brien getting a rest. There's Mom. Jim Gaddison played at William Penn in Oskaloosa, Iowa. You just like saying that. Oh, I do. Yeah. It, it rolls off the tongue. Well, Chuck Fisher, uh, assistant coach and former great high school coach, he was saying that O'Brien, the big upside, he works hard, he understands what it's going to take. He said if he were this good in high school, we wouldn't get him. And, and that's the benefit of going and developing and spotting young talent. Jamie Dixon's going uh, to his bench. Here is Sam Young, number 23, on the floor. And Gray will get a rest while O'Brien is out. So the two seven-footers are down. Zach Andrews came on in place 
of Gray, and Fields is also on the floor. Uh, Young gives them some athleticism, very quick. Nice follow. Zach Andrews. Marcella Summers puts it on the floor, tries to get by Kendall. Beautiful bounce pass. And how about the cut, too? Just don't finish on that particular shot. Andrews, very available. Rousey. Now, once in a while, Carl, if things aren't going well, takes over. And this may be one of those situations. They're not as smooth or they're not in sync for him. Lavance Fields, yeah. foul called on Daniel Ruffin. On the pass, a little bit of a weave there. Fields, one of those tanks, you know, deceptive body strength, can hang in the air, take some hits as well. Will Franklin comes on now, number four, with that 35-footer at the buzzer the other night that uh, propelled Bradley to a 10-point lead over Kansas at halftime. Here's Young, shot no good, and they got Kendall. Mm -hmm. Kendall using that right arm to clear space, and he just called for the foul. Uh, you can see fundamentally you can get frustrated because they check out, they do all the little things to coordinate their defense. And he's an outstanding Bradley team on that end of the floor. 6-2 in the early going. We have played six minutes. Lawrence Wright, senior, is also on the floor for Bradley. Here's Bennett. Nice dish right side. And the slam, Zach Andrews. And yeah, they just lost concentration. Nice cut, very alert. Quick mobility. They slip different guys into the box area. 8-2, Bradley. There's the jumper, LeVance Fields. And Pitt still can't buy a basket. A little instant offense, Fields comes up empty that trip. Will Franklin, number four, high pick from Somerville. Penetration in the corner, Bennett. Closely guarded. Off the mark with a jumper. Boy, they are out hustling him right now. Yes, they are. Oh, my goodness. Nice pursuit of the ball by Lawrence Wright. Now Krauser, 24-year-old senior. You said you wouldn't mention his age. <laughs> He's going to take this personal. He did have some fun with him. Yes, he got a smile yesterday when you uh, reminded him that his games were being broadcast by two guys his age. <laughs> Us. <laughs> Uh, Kendall once again in the middle of it, huh? Ball on the floor. Nice alert play by Tony Bennett. Sure was, and Graves pay for it. That's a heads-up play on both ends. Yes. Unfortunately for Pitt, you pay for it. 8-2. Bradley. Let's check the five on the floor for the Braves now. Will Franklin, number four. Marcellus Somerville. Zach Andrews. Bennett. And Lawrence Wright. And one of those guys that can bite you outside. He'll look for the three. Off the glass, too strong. Put back, not there. Right, got it the third time. He is in the right place. I mean, he's just out scrapping and out hustling. Jamie Dixon wants the timeout. Right now, Pitt not quick to the ball, and Bradley certainly is, Vern. Great start for Bradley. Now 10 to 2. Coming up, other second round games. Top seeded Memphis against Bucknell. North Carolina against George Mason, Kentucky, Connecticut. And here is Jim Last, 42 years of age. Star for this Bradley Brave team. Dick Versace, his coach, back in the mid 80s. And Pitt still looking for its first field goal. 0 for 7 from the field and five turnovers. Yeah, but the big fella, it's got to go through him at some point. Basically down in the box area. Here to try to run their set. They have not been organized, Vern. Gray back, so also is Patrick O'Brien. Little jumper in the lane there is the first field goal to Pitt. And it comes after 8 minutes and 13 seconds. Well, Young's one of those guys that can face the basket. A very tough kid. Sam Young got it. O'Brien, number 13. Nice lock low after the pin down. It gives him the axe and Somerville to the rim. How about that strength? Holding off a pretty strong individual and young. Marcellus Somerville. Now the Vance Fields works the point. Carl Krauser getting a rest now for Jamie Dixon's team. 
Here's Fields. Blocked by O'Brien. Now you better be going up strong with the big guy around. Nothing easier, soft. You gotta go at him. Back at Auburn Hills, we invite you to vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of this round. Nearly $150,000 of scholarship contributions is on the line. Vote now at NCAAsports.com slash Pontiac. 12-4, Bradley leads, 11.08 to go first half. And this is a pit team that had 67% from the field in its win, had another turnover for Krauser. And right here, Vern, you see that, Brad Pitt? Brad like, Pitt. Yeah, you watch the Boy. movies once in a while. Boy. Angela <laughs> Jolie might be upstairs someplace, I'm sure. Oh, my How about gosh. That? <laughs> well, inside information. I need for you to concentrate on the oh. game. <laughs> well, I could be distracted. <laughs> <laughs> nice cut again and getting it deep, right? Before, well, he does. Gets the roll. You know, looking at that graphic, we, we could uh, advertise that and increase our female demographic by about 80 percent. Exactly. They might think he's doing the games. Pittsburgh, one of nine from the field. That's ugly, as opposed to the graphic. And they hit 67 percent, as we said the other night. There's an air ball. I, I can't That's figure somebody. out what we're watching. And Ramona, an unerring shooter. And here's the little curl. Uh, that's just great basketball. Little screen, little bump. They possess great hit, quick hitting possibilities, and they take advantage, particularly the lackadaisical defense. They're not leading the cutters. Pitt, that is. Daniel Ruffin, his father, a coach at Peoria Central High School. His half brother is A.J. Guyton, the former store star from Indiana. And there is a foul, and Wright's going to go to the line. And Krauser with number two. Yes. And they're posting him up. They're slipping the taller guy in on Krauser, who normally leads guys. There's a certain toughness, physicality. And with the two, I, Jenny Dixon is not going to waste any time. He's going with Antonio Graves. Lawrence Wright will go to the line, shooting two. Senior, lived around the country. His dad, a master sergeant in the Air Force, and he calls Beale Air Force Base, California, home now. Second year, he played a couple of years at Yuba College, and Carl Krauser a little disappointed as he sits down. You know, these early leads, uh, obviously, if you're Bradley, you love them, you're going to take advantage of them, uh, but you can still get your legs and get back into the game, particularly a seasoned veteran team as deep as Pitt. Uh, but right now, they are somewhat shaky, Burn. LeVance Fields at the point. Ramon is also on the floor. Antonio Graves, Sam Young, and Aaron Gray. That one tipped, so no over in the back call. How about the pressure on the ball? And Gray lifting a little bit. This could help in a sense of getting some easier opportunities. There was O'Brien. He got his hand on the ball, but Gray held on and gets his first basket. And great deployment, too. You brought the big guy up. He had a show defensively and then sprinted a 10. Oh. There's O'Brien and a foul on Gray. I believe that's number two. That's two on Gray, two on Krauser. Uh, you can't reach down. You got to get in position. How about this? He just slipped to the goal. Really solid. And then on the other end, I think he's letting Bryant post up too deep. And all of a sudden, you're in the danger zone. Uh, you just can't ride a guy out. His hands were up, but the body rub got him. Foul on the seven-footer, Gray. The other seven-footer, O'Brien, goes to the line. Said uh, he spent last summer at the Pete Newell Big Man Camp out in California. And his roommate, ironically enough, for Sasha Khan, who, of course, a uh, key player for Kansas, and they went at each other here on Thursday night. And then he was in the cell also with John Arnett, a physical trainer down in Philly. They worked out in the different gyms. I was disappointed. He said he was at LaSalle. Did not see my number retired. He didn't look in the right room, obviously. Somewhere in the basement. But uh, this is a big upside for him, too. Very talented guy, but now they're at a disadvantage with the foul problems. Levon Kendall's going to have to play O'Brien, but he can bring him away from the rim. That's what he should do. There's Young. Back to Graves, guarded by Tony Bennett. Ramon, Ruffin has him. And see, this is what he's going to be able to do, either shoot the jump shot or pull him. Had him be. Ruffin falls down, and Ramon hits the three. 
Now, Ronald, an unerring shooter, doesn't need a lot of shots to ring the bell for this team either. Now, Will Franklin, Bennett, pump fake, jumper way off the mark. Rebound, Levance Fields. Kendall, screen by Young, up and under, got it. Boy, this kid is talented. He really can do some things. We mentioned the other night his ability to score for Canada against USA. Here he dumps O'Brien on the deck, and they're going to call him. Now, I don't know. The old days, I loved when officials said, let's clean it up. Come on, guys. But they don't do that anymore. In my eyes, a little bit of a nickel diamond. There's some hands there. Yeah, just to play on. O'Brien actually lost his footing. That's two again. Uh, another big guy for Pitt. So one and one already now as Kendall picks up his second. Gray has his second and Krauser has two so foul difficulties his officiating crew as we said Scott Thornley has officiated three final fours Mark Reisling one and David Libby eight so it's a very experienced and uh, accomplished officiating crew now Patrick O'Brien from Blaine Minnesota Blaine a northern suburb of Minneapolis you were teasing him about being a farmer from Minnesota, and he said, I know the tallest farmer. <laughs> <laughs> he was quick to acknowledge that uh, farming was not in his future. And we're from the city, he said. Yep. Yeah, he can live where he wants, and he keeps improving like this someday. Levance Fields, Antonio Graves. There's O'Brien to alter the shot again. Well, he's great at that. Great positional D. Shows, recovers. Young in the lane, O'Brien again. I think he's got to move the big guy out just like this. Make him do some things away from the goal. 18-11, under eight minutes to go, first half. For Hill, since it opened in 18 years ago, they work every event, and they are charming. They said their least favorite event here, there were two of them, boxing and hard rock concerts. And I said, well, who's your favorite piston player? Right. The one that gets thrown out. And you know who that is? That Rashid would be Wallace. Ben Wallace. <laughs> no, Rashid. Rashid. Rashid, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, Ben's gentle. <laughs> oh, a quick timeout here caused by pressure defense by Bradley. Well, the court is clean. The ladies work hard. They shape up every day, just like Bradley. With a seven-point lead, they have yet to turn it over. Neither team hitting particularly well from the field now. But Bradley up by seven and three pit members with 2,000 each. Here's Levance Fields on the air ball. How about that? Ronald Ramon had a wide open look. Actually couldn't have gotten to the rim. O'Brien, who is out, one block and five hurries. That'll disrupt your offense. Marcella Somerville, number 15 out defensively. Here's a shot from the corner. Levance Fields cans the three. And turns to the bench. Uh, just play. Yeah. A little tease to Bradley. That does cut the lead to four. 18-14. Eight unanswered now. By Pitt. They just cut beautifully. That time Andrews on a curl. And just missed the easy one. Antonio Graves guarded by J.J. Twy. Over Twy off the front rim. Zach Andrews with a rebound. But they have nice rotation, don't they? The bigs are very mobile. Andrews down the floor already. Little runner in the lane, Ruffin. Now it's Bradley that can't buy a basket. Whistle, foul. I think Ruffin burned. That's two on Ruffin away from the ball. Doyle Hudson is also on the floor now because of the foul trouble for Pitt. Where's number 21? And uh, let's see if uh, Ruffin heads to the bench. He will. Lawrence Wright, the senior from California, takes his place. 18-14. Ramon. Try doing the right shot. They are right on you once you catch it. We were so impressed with J.J. Twy the other night, one of nine kids, the youngest of nine from a family that grew up in Verona, Missouri, across from Springfield. Now here he gets caught. I don't know if they get it on the side. And it looks like they're pointing at right. You know, Twy's one of those guys who's got to be happy to be on the road. He can finally get a meal without fighting for it. Huh? <laughs> J.J. Twy picks up the foul. Small town, Verona, Missouri, and one of seven brothers who played basketball. 
five of whom scored more than a thousand points. Points. Mm. Uh, Twy doubled that. He was over two thousand. JJ Twy. Yeah, look at him stay at home on Ronald Ramon. Not helping gives the post people opportunity to roam. Graves short. Lawrence Wright finds Will Franklin. And Franklin gets a screen from O'Brien. Takes it all the way. No. I'll tell you that's no basket. The, that's not good defense at all. I mean, nobody stepped up. I think it may have been Graves. They let the guy turn the corner. This is not pit defense, and I think it's attributable to the offense being run by Jim Les's guys. Very quick, hard cutting, rubbing people off bumps. Remember what you said to Jim Les the other night. When, as a great shooter, did you uh, place the emphasis on defense? Like you? <laughs> well, you know, of course, when you finally coach, you realize what all those coaches were saying to you all your life. <laughs> Tuesday on CBS. See why the unit has become TV's number one new show. Don't miss a new episode Tuesday after NCIS on CBS, America's number one network. Off the miss, here comes Pitt. Levance Fields, Antonio Graves, Doyle Hudson, Sam Young, and Ronald Ramon, the five on the floor for Pitt. Flat huh? jumper, young, that's for two. Boy, that helps when you can penetrate, turn heads. Twy is not leaving Ronald Ramon, so they're going to be able to cut and penetrate on his side. 1916, Pitt has not led in this game. And another hold again, this one by Graves, I think. Graves or Fields. But here's the kick out off the penetration. Drive, draw. A little nylon at the end of that dish. And the second foul on Antonio, third foul on Antonio Graves. Sends Lawrence right to the uh, line. Carl Krauser will take Graves' spot now. Now, Vern, you've done some big East games. Mm -hmm. Pitt is known as a physical defensive team. And sometimes during the year, they will do a lot of playing on. NCAA tournament time, they're going to call a lot of those hand touches. And if you're a little late on a cut and rub a guy, so they've got to be careful. Another miss at the line for the Bradley Braves from Peoria, Illinois. And Krauser on with the two, yes. as noted. Fields guarded by Will Franklin. Boy, he's an energetic young man. And how about that over the little kiss over Patrick O'Brien, looming deep. Off the glass, a one-point game, a 12-1 run. Why? Finds O'Brien. No. Clean block by Sam Young. Franklin, three. Boy, they hang tough, huh? Boy, what a nice counter. This team has some poise. 22-18, under five to go, first half. Young. Nice, soft shot. Well, he has really helped them with the long jumper and that, the running hook. Young has six off the bench. And I think O'Brien's got to get some touches with this lineup. Whoops. Twy almost lost it. The old-fashioned weave. We, yes. can, we can relate. And automatic <laughs> switching on the perimeter. This is when they're trying to get it inside. They weave to look to a duck in. Marcella Somerville left open. Franklin Somerville right over on the wing. O'Brien in the deep post. Nice cut again, and Ronald late. Twy! I, I, are they going the other way with it? They are. Whew. It took wow. him a while. There was an offensive foul. But it was so indicated. And you got nothing on me. And you got nothing on me. And you got nothing on me. 3.49 to go first half. Fouls, a uh, concern of both teams. Bennett, Twy, and Ruffin with two each. And for Pitt, Graves with three. Kendall Krauser and Gray with two. And, and Pitt does have a deep bench, but not a deep size bench. So if O'Brien can do some damage, and they got Kendall in with those two, he's got to make sure he doesn't give one. I would go right at him at the other end. Now here's Krauser, no points so far in the game. Kendall, nice, soft shot. Is that good coaching though? Yes. You get the screen, bring O'Brien away. He's not, he's dominating away from the goal. And Kendall showing touch and knowledge. Bradley jumped out to an 18 to six lead. And here's good coaching too. He doesn't want to get number three. Go ahead. Yep. Smart. 
Patrick O'Brien. Seven foot sophomore. He's in double figures now with 10. You know, at some point, you got to front him, I think. The lob's a hard thing if you put pressure on the ball. Give it a shot, right? Browser gives it up to Young. Kendall tries to chase down the rebound. Touch last by O'Brien. Uh, this is just a little, if you're front, maybe it'll be a tough catch. He shuffled the feet a little. That's one thing he doesn't have great balance yet, but he will get that down the road. And what a disadvantage for Kendall, but he countered on the other end. A little screen and slide, screen and pop. Here's the jumper. Krauser still hasn't gotten the basket. J.J. Twy tracks it down. And he's got to be careful, too, with the two persons as well. On the floor now, Franklin O'Brien, Somerville, Twy, and Lawrence Wright for the Braves of Bradley out of the Missouri Valley Conference. The winner goes on to play either top-seeded Memphis or Bucknell. They'll play later this afternoon. And this is an Oakland bracket game, so the winner goes west. And they were trying to get Krauser out of foul in fouls, too. How about this? Wright was not blocked out and put back his own miss. Well, they're getting catches that I have not seen against a pit team. A great execution, but faulty D as well. Pit team that was in the Big East final, knocked out by Syracuse. They, in turn, had defeated Villanova handily in the Big East tournament. And you got to pull up with O'Brien Lomi. And Kendall tr trying to set up a little deeper defensively. Under two to go. The three-quarter by Kendall. I don't know why they're not going in there. Causes the turnover. That is their first turnover of the ball game. Coming up on Singular at the half, Greg Clark and Seth will cover the hottest topics in basketball with another round of buzzer beaters. Jim Nance talks with Villanova's Alan Ray about his recovery from an eye injury in the Big East tournament and a singular Naismith update. That's all coming up on Singular at the half. Now that Alan Ray incident was scary, wasn't it? Fortunate for him. And then he came back in the first round, had a big game. <laughs> it looks like he's healthy. That's great. Browser. Little scoop shot. Got it. And just enough distance because Kendall held off O'Brien. Heads up play. First basket for the senior from New York City. Well, they got him in the lane. Yeah, nice job. See, that's that balance for him. He just doesn't quite get gathered. And I can relate to that. <laughs> I've seen you gather it. Less, less than gathered, really. He's in the right spot. He's gathered it right now. <laughs> oh. And we gather together. And not for blessings. 30-26. Brad over Pitt. Look at this defense. Almost causes the turnover right in the spot. Bradley with 10 offensive rebounds. In the first half, 11 second chance points. They have led throughout from the corner. Fields! And then defensively, why help out? Should have stayed at home. Paid for it. A little unhurried from deep. Sister Maggie is in her first year as the head basketball coach for women at West Point. They have a tough first round game being played simultaneously down in their matched against Tennessee, Oof. the second seed, and they are trailing 50 to 26. You know how you call players silent assassins? I think Jamie I at the meter. Oh boy, he is competitive. And his teams usually take on his personality. Thus far defensively, they have not. This should go through O'Brien. Somerville, another guy that can post up and do some damage. And by the way, Jimmy's got the foul ridden guys out. Yes. Kendall and Krauser. Final eight seconds. Here's Franklin. Not there. You see, to me, that's sort of a wasted trip. Yeah. Here's the big guy. End of the first half with our score Brad 30, Pitt 29. We'll send you to Great Gumble in New York after this message and a word from your local station.